Hello everybody, welcome to the Shadow Zone and to another Kerbal Space Program launch. I am participating in the Reddit Weekly Challenge, which uh, this time is uh, rejuvenating the shuttle program. So this is my shuttle, it's well, pretty much standard fare. It's got an orbiter on the back, a big old tank in the middle and two boosters on the side. Uh, those boosters are, as you can see, not solid fuel, but liquid fuel boosters because I really did not manage to get an SRB shuttle working and we're tipping over after passing about 11,000 kilometers uh, 11 kilometers, of course, 11,000 meters then we have to get that thing back on trajectory and fire up the engines. I really tried to uh, hold back on the RCS because I'm using Werner engines and they of course use liquid fuels and oxidizer and the more I use of that the less I have to use in my three skipper engines. So you can see uh, the window on the left side is the stage uh, for stage recovery, it's a flight manager, a cool plugin that I picked up a few weeks back. And both boosters are designed in such a way that uh, when they drop, they have a small probe core on board. And when you uh, open up the parachutes, they are straight in the center of mass and they should glide down safely to Earth, or rather to water on Kerbin and you can recover them. I've tested that and it works, but I forgot to record it for this video, so you just have to take my word for it. And here I'm trying to start the circularization burn, which of course I have to first do on the three main engines and then on the orbital maneuvering system, releasing the big fuel tank and then firing up the monopropellant engines which I am using for the orbital maneuvering system. Uh, as you may notice I kind of messed up the alignment a little bit so the shuttle always likes to uh, pitch up when I activate the OMS but I can manage if I don't throttle up too much. And here we go we're starting our mission we are delivering a payload and it is a 36 ton Rockamax fuel tank. And without any docking ports or any other means to engage with this hunk of junk, it is basically that, a hunk of junk because, well, it's basically just debris. But I put it in there for demonstration purposes so you can see that this shuttle is able to deliver 36 tons of cargo into low carbon orbit. So of course if you use uh, a lot uh, smaller payloads you can get that thing very far into space indeed. So then I realized hey I still got another experimental station on uh, in orbit and I tried to rendezvous with it. Uh, there was some slight problem which uh, we will see just a few seconds or minutes but uh, first off we have to do some maneuvering and some noting I messed up the intersect uh, for a little bit but I was able to correct with the RCS because it was powerful enough to do that beautiful sight the shuttle over the planet and then it was time to meet the station. Unfortunately, it's a night side rendezvous. Sorry about that. But we have some lights on board, so maybe you can see the station in all its glory. You can see it in the background. Peculiar shape, isn't it? And of course, the name Ringo Gigante should also give you a hint about what kind of station that is. Once again, orbital maneuvering system messing up my trajectory a little bit. And here we go. 
getting on to target. There it is, my big beautiful space station, uh, a ring station of course, uh, which I, well, to be perfectly honest, I was inspired by some other guy on the forums, I forgot the name, sorry about that, who uh, made a station very similar to this one, but instead of six spokes he was using three spokes and I think the station was even bigger and had I think space for about 1600 kerbals or something. But I thought, well, what's the point really for 1600 kerbals? So I just used six uh, 16 kerbal containers and filled the rest with cargo bays. Why cargo bays, you may ask? Well, I figured if I put uh, docking ports inside those cargo bays, I could uh, upgrade this station or rather enhance it with some additional modules in the future. And there we go. Let's take a look at how that would look like. For that we have to open up the cargo bays. There we go. And there you can see the big uh, senior docking ports uh, where you can add some well, science labs, habitation modules, experiments, you name it. So this station is very flexible uh, despite being utterly, utterly uh, insane. And well then I realized I don't have any docking port here that the shuttle could use, so I decided well let's just send an adapter up there and started building a small rocket with some small probe core and just two stages and fired it up into the night sky to rendezvous with Ringo Gigante and get a docking port for our shuttle on that. So second stage firing, getting up into the atmosphere. And then I overshot way too far with my apoaps. I aimed for about 100 kilometers and I ended up at like 200 something. So I decided, well, let's do it this way anyway. So just some minor adjustments to my orbit and trying to get a rendezvous with the station. There we go! Also the shuttle has already drifted away from my space station, so I have to get it back as soon as the docking port is installed. That should be just a measure of seconds merely. Getting ready to aim for the station and firing it up. I'm going in very fast, as you can see, because I'm confident in my thrust-to-weight ratio, or rather in the thrust-to-weight ratio of that little spaceship that will bring docking port to the space station. Once again, my trusty companion, the Docking Alignment Indicator mod, which is one of the most useful tools, uh, aside from Kerbal Engineer, that I have ever used inside of this game. And I really hope that the developers someday put something like that in the game itself. So lining it up. Because, you know, in real life there are the shuttle and space stations, they usually have some indicators or even some cameras uh, where they can see how the docking ports are lining up. Of course they don't have external cameras like we do here. Uh, there we go, docking port installed, and now it's time to deorbit, but the station is in the way. Doesn't matter, we just go straight through it, firing up the thrusters. There's enough space to get by. Yep, no worries. As I said before, of course, uh, real astronauts do have some kind of docking cameras, but they don't have that 
um, beautiful panoramic uh, external views that we have in this game. Uh, I once tried, when I was using B9 more extensively, I once tried docking a space plane to a space station only using the internal cockpit views uh, paired with a raster prop monitor, which uh, is of course included in the latest B9 release in the big HL cockpit. And it was quite exciting to be honest, but also, well, not so much uh, on the other hand. It was exciting for, uh, from, for difficulty reasons, but not so much from a gameplay uh, standpoint. And look at that, almost an eclipse and the station and the planet and the shuttle all in one shot. Beautiful. So it was time to line up the docking ports and get our shuttle to dock with the space station. Why dock with the space station? Because that uh, would increase your values, so to speak, for the Reddit challenge. And once more taking a beauty shot with the station's open cargo bays and the shuttle on approach. Of course, well, 0.45 meters per second uh, is rather fast, uh, even for Kerbal Space Program and even more so for uh, the real world, because this kind of maneuver in space in actual space would take way longer because you really have to be careful those are tons of equipment expensive equipment that are being pushed together in vacuum in uh anti-gravity no, not anti-gravity in zero gravity and here we go we've docked with the space station what a beautiful sight Unfortunately, we don't have any useful cargo that we could have delivered to the space station, but nevertheless, we just managed to dock with it, just to show it to you. And now it is time to get back down to the surface. If I remember the geography of Kerbin correctly, we're just above the main desert, which is west of the continent where the Kerbal Space Center is located. So if I initiate a big enough uh, retrograde burn, I should be able to get in close vicinity, at least, of the Space Center. And yes, my assumption was correct. And it could be possible, it should be possible to do that. I still have enough Delta V left. Lining up for a retrograde burn and getting away from the space station. Trajectories mod helping me out here, showing me where I will probably land. Of course, it would be uh, more precise with uh, Ferrum airspace and not with the Kerbal uh, stock aerodynamics. But nevertheless, it is a very helpful tool and I came to uh, have come to like it very much cargo bay opening and closing for no reason at all and here we are on approach so we're still going to probably overshoot so i'm trying to do some turns to break a little bit more turn to the right turn to the left Still got some fuel left for some emergency burn, but we are at the moment merely gliding and trying to hit the runway. Looks flapping about. The curls look excited. Of course, we can't look inside the cockpit uh, to see how they're doing because we don't have any IVA for the new shuttle cockpit yet but I really hope that's something they will add in version 1.0. Actually, they should add that because any official version without every cockpit uh, should not be released. And on approach, whoops, jumping, jumping, and yes, we have touched down safely on the runway of the Kerbal Space Center. So it's time to celebrate this occasion, where, which is why Alton Kerman is leaving the cockpit. 
So that's it for my shuttle sh challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.